So let's talk about the layout file. So what is the layout file? Well, basically, it's just an XML representation of everything we've talked about so far. You, have the, you can see that the view tree that we talked about before can be represented in an XML format. And then at runtime, the Android operating system is going to take that XML and construct an object graph right out of that. So it's, it's the exact same behavior that you would get as if you had manually in Java created the structure. But having it in the XML file, as, as I had talked about before, is preferable because of that separation of concerns and, of course, because you can swap it out with different configurations and localization options. So it's really quite simple. We're going to go ahead and look at, at a layout file and then some different actual layouts that we can use in Android. And then we'll go forward and we'll actually build one. So let's go ahead and look at a real layout file. I've opened up our protein tracker project that we created in the last module, and I'm looking at the main.xml file under the res layout folder. Here we're looking at the graphical representation of it, and you can see that we have a couple of controls on here, which we now know are actually views. And let's take a look at the XML to see what is actually creating this here. So inside the main XML here, uh, let me expand this so that we can see it a little better. Okay, uh, you can see that it's just an XML file, and then it has a root element. We have to have a root element for each uh, for any XML file, and the root element here is a linear layout, and that is just a layout file that or a layout view that is basically a view group that can contain multiple views. And it is a particular one that allows us to lay things out in a linear fashion, either vertically or horizontally. And we'll go a little bit more into that in the next section when we actually talk about the different types of layouts. But for now, just know that this is like a panel or any kind of layout file that would, would allow you to put multiple controls inside of it. So that's our root here. And then we have a text view inside, we have an edit view, and we have a couple of buttons. So all of this is going to be inside that linear layout. And if we look at some of these controls, let's take a look at, for example, this edit text control. So this edit text control, we have some attributes on here. The first one we have is Android layout underscore width equals fill parent. And what this is, is basically with inside the layout file, the views need to have, they have two required parameters that are gonna be required on every single view, which is a layout width and a layout height. And this is just gonna say how that this edit text is gonna fill its parent or how it's going to have its width or height. And in this case, it's gonna be fill parent. A lot of times you're just gonna use either fill parent or wrap content. And fill parent is, as you can probably guess, going to expand as far as the parent will allow it. So this will completely fill up the the linear or the linear layout for the width. And then for the height, we're saying wrap content. So it's just gonna be as big as it needs to be. And, and you're mainly gonna to wanna to use those when you work with resource files like this layout file, because you want to make it work scale on different devices. The other thing that you might use here, anytime you're specifying any kind of size inside of a, of a file, of a layout file, you're gonna to wanna to use basically what's called device independent pixels. And I'll show you the syntax for that once we actually create our own view, but you can basically specify instead of saying 10 pixels you would just say like 10 device independent pixels it's actually pretty simple this little part here this android is kind of the namespace for the attribute so in this case these are the ones that belong to android you can actually create your own custom ones but that's that's a pretty advanced topic so another thing to look at here is this id android id this is what Android uses to generate that r.java file that's going to give you a strong name that you can use to find this control later. If you look at this, the way that this is formatted, this at symbol basically means parse the rest of the string as a resource. And then this plus here says 
we're going to have to create this resource if it doesn't exist. So what will happen is when Android sees this, it will see this at, it will know, okay, I'm going to interpret what's coming up and then it'll see this plus and it'll say, oh, okay, whatever is coming up here, it's going to be an ID and it's going to be edit text one. So then it will generate in our r.java, we have ID edit text one. And that's how it knows to do that. Now, if we were to not put this plus here, it would still interpret this as not a, a literal, right? It would, it would interpret this line, but it would be looking for this to already exist. Now, and Android defines some that already exist in the Android namespace. So there's would be Android slash whatever. So uh, just a little important point to, to notice there is every time you're declaring an ID for the most part, you're just going to want to make sure you have that plus. It's really easy to forget that. And then you'll wonder why you can't access that control. So that's really all there is to the XML layout file. And uh, we'll take a, couple, a look at a couple of them and then we'll go ahead and try and create our own.